Hi, I'm Dave from boynaband.com. Let's move to the first device I'll be looking at from Complete 7, Reactor 5. Features and versatility. Now, for a month or so, I did a synth tech module at university, and one of the devices that scared me the most was Reactor 5. Now, it doesn't look too scary until you do this. Yeah, if you didn't have any idea what was going on, neither did I. Reactor 5 is quite possibly the most in-depth synth you'll find without learning a programming language. You can literally build pretty much any synth you can imagine with these building blocks. I can't think of a synth with more features and versatility than that. Now, while this is terrifying to a newbie, fortunately you don't have to go that in-depth straight away. I did that just for shock value, I hear it's all the rage on YouTube these days. So that brings us neatly to usability. So for newbies, simply cast your eyes over here to the library in the sidebar. You've got the player, which unfortunately has nothing to do with pulling loads of chicks, but fortunately has a lot to do with finding sweet synths. The three that I got in Complete 7 were Reactor Spark, The Finger, and Reactor Prism. You can just drag these in and load them up, and essentially each one is a whole new synth of its own. I'll show you Prism in another video, because it's quite an interesting synth, but before you get disgruntled and say, hey, but you said this was in depth, there's only like three synths here, take a look in the factory bank. If we go open up instruments and skip past all the analyzers, delays, effects, groove boxes, sequences, samplers, etc., because there's all kinds in here as well, we can see there's a bunch of synths right here each one with different methods of sound generation. So let's take a look at the quality. Now there are some good ones and some cheesy ones. In fact, quite a few seem very vintage to me, both in looks and by the sounds of the presets. Which is not so useful for those of you making more modern sounds, but then you come across synths like Laser Bass It looks like Tron threw up on a mixing desk, which I love, and the display up top is a great way of visualizing the sounds. In fact, Reactor has some really interesting sound displays all the way through, which makes sound designing a lot more fun and tactile. As you can see, there's a few different ways of seeing each different sound as well. Now, as you'd imagine, this is a brilliant synth for things like dubstep, drum and bass, or even Electro House. And as before, you can double click to start getting scarily in depth if you want to. If you want to learn about the intricacies of sound design and alter it, or you can stick to messing around with the dials on the front, which gives some really satisfying results when making dirty bass sounds. Now I'll quickly show you a couple of other devices. If we go into sound generators and select Space Drone, this is an absolutely incredible synth for making ambient or dark atmospheric sounds. Again, here's a great example of the visual element of Reactor 5, with these two screens that make the sound fun to watch as well as hear. Simply messing with these dials alters the sound.
You don't even need to play keyboard with this one. I'd probably end up resampling it if I wanted something consistent, but this one is another really useful one for people making darker dubstep or ambient and glitchy electronica. Now let's top things off with something completely out there, and if you thought Space Drone was weird, you ain't seen nothing yet. If we go back to synthesizers and load up Gougier. Now it's described as a synth, but if you can tell me what's going on here, please explain, because I genuinely don't have a clue. But then again, I'm not currently mashed off my face on hard drugs. So yeah, the quality very much depends on the synth you pick. And if you look at their website, there are literally thousands of synths created by users that you can freely download. Overall, so as you can see, there's synths for all kinds of purposes. It can be a case of quality over quantity in a way, since some of the synths are quite basic, but if you use those quality ones in it, then it is a brilliant synth. I'd say it's suited towards producers that really want to get into their sound generation, but still pretty good for producers wanting to focus on the music more than the sounds, so long as they can spend a day or two when they get it looking through the vast library of synths to find the ones they'll find useful. Also, as a take it and break it kind of learning tool for budding synth designers, it's second to none. Tune in for tomorrow's video, where I'll be taking a look at Prism. A really interesting synth that uses some of Reactor 5's interesting options to great effect. Cheers for watching and have a nice day! If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boy in a Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave P. Brown. And if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boy in a Band forum at boyinaband.com forum and sign up so you can share your songs to get new fans and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day!